Hi, I'm Stephen Hand from Archery Supplies. Today we're going to look at the Evoke 35. This bow is new for 2019 from PSE. It replaces the Evolve 35, which was a very popular bow for PSE. Now you're going to say, what's different between this bow and the Evolve 35? Now the Evolve 35 did not have this bridged riser design here. It had the Evolve cam system, but this is a slightly different Evolve cam system. You're going to say, what's the difference? And I'm going to say, I've got no idea. But I know the little number just there is different to the Evolve 35. So I'm going to be interested to see what this bow feels like. This bow has a machined pocket, the same as the Evolve 35. Uh, the Evolve cam system is, is a twin cam, so same cam, top and bottom, with a yoke system to pull the cams evenly. Now the advantage of the Evolve cam system is you can change the modules on the bow to go from high let off to low let off to a fast module. Now the fast module will increase the speed by about 10 feet per second. The low let off I think is about four feet per second. Now why do you want to change these modules to change the feel of the bow? Because you want a faster bow, you want a high let off bow for hunting, you want a faster bow for 3D. Now if you're like me and I shoot target archery, I prefer a low let off for shooting back tension so when I'm actually holding, I'm holding less weight. This bow enables you to change the feel of the bow by purchasing a different module. Now these modules enable you to change the let off. Now this comes fitted with a high let off module, which is adjustable from 90 to 80% let off. Um, I'm just going to pull off some statistics for you. The draw length is, available, is adjustable from 26.5 to 32 inches in draw length. Now that is through rotating the module. You do not need a bow press to do that, it's just a simple Two, two little screws there and I'm hoping I'll get the other one just there. Um, you loosen those, we're using a Torx Allen key set and loosen those, rotate them. The largest letter A is the longest draw length and whatever the smallest is, um, L is the smallest. Very, very simple to do. Um, the brace height on this bow is 6.87, so it's quite generous for a hunting bow, hunting 3D bow. Um, axle axle is 35 inches, same as the Evolve 35. Um, now what did they change in this bow? They changed the finish of this bow. This is a fusion finish. So in the past PSE have, have you been using a film dip process? This process is actually blended into the metal. Now the first um, Evoke I showed the pattern on it was different to this, it was shiny. What I've seen with the later with the later versions of the Evokes is it's becoming more matte and the, the finish is actually much, much improved over the first, first versions of this bow. Now this bow comes, I'm going to get this all wrong, so please check the statistics. Comes in black, charcoal, real tree, mossy oak. Does it come in any other colours? I don't know if they do colours, they may do colours in this bow as well, and I probably should have checked, checked that beforehand. Um, now they're fitting the bigger axles, which is basically happened with the Perform bows and the Supras in 2018, so that they basically changed this axle to be thicker, and that stopped the thing where the limbs looked like they were bent. Um, it's got a wedge lock system, so there's a little wedge lock system there. Now what that does, it puts pressure on the limbs there, pushing it that way, and this limb pocket system pushes in there. So this limb's actually held in place by the wedge lock system. You do not adjust this when you wind up and down the bow and bow poundage. You just use that Allen key there to wind up and wind down. Now this bow in poundage, you've got a full 10 turns in poundage. And I think this bow will wind down quite a bit in poundage. Um, a roller slide and the cables are served to stop wear. The cable slide is a flexible slide so it basically flexes in and you can see there it's machined out to encourage it to flex. You can change the position on this to increase or decrease um, the angle on the cables. Now I did get a question from one dealer. He was finding he was getting a little bit of a noise on his evoke and it was coming through the cable just at the top here touching the cam and all he had to do was move this away just a smidge and that cable became completely clear and the noise went away so if you are getting noise on the bow first off check to see if it's not the module 
Sometimes you've got to put some wax in between the module because it can just create a bit of movement between the two metal plates. Um, and if it's not that, it's probably the cable touching the um, cam. But that's, that's pretty rare. Overall, the finish of this bow to me looks very, very good. Now, this bow, once again, to me is, I'm gonna say a replica. It's hitting the, there's a standard pattern out here that 35 inches is starting to become common in the 3D scene. So Elite use it, um, Matthews use it. This bridge design, this color fusion, which is similar on the Elites and Primes. Um, to me this overall process, the way it looks, is probably not as clean as some of the other bow manufacturers such as Elite or Prime. Um, now I'm going to show you a quick thing on this one. You can see there, there's some little lines. Um, now I'm generally going to find that the Prime and the Elite is slightly better in the finish, but this to me is perfectly acceptable. And the Evoke and the PSE is underpriced, under the price of the Prime and the Elite. Now the things about PSE which make it good, obviously customer service on PSE is excellent. No one's even close. The warranty is excellent. But what's really good about this is how easy this bow is to work on. So I worked on a Prime the other day and um, to try and get your fingers inside the cam to twist up and twist to tune the bow to change the timing on the wheels because you've got to twist the strings and cables it's really you've got to have very small fingers to get your fingers inside the cam and I say we spent probably I feel like it was almost three hours trying to tune a prime it was a nightmare for us that's because I basically had no experience with it beforehand PSC is very very easy to work on and not as temperamental to changes that that prime was that prime was half a turn on the cable before the cams were in time or out of time the PSE I just find I, the tolerance is just not that tight as far as half a turn on the cables really doesn't affect that much at all that prime it, it made a huge huge difference just half a twist on the cables um, now these strings are made by PSE these are the live wire strings made up by a computer um, on their new computer system they are good strings, they don't, I find they don't have any peep rotation, it's a nice system. Now I don't know what the published weight of this bow is, but I weighed it on a scale before I did this review and it weighed 5 pounds, 7, 5.07 pounds. That's with the sight and whiskey biscuit on it. To me it's a little bit heavy. It's really the weight of a target bow for a hunting bow, I'd like it lighter, I like, I prefer weights of the 4 pounds. And that's why for me, as much as I like this bow, and I've never shot this bow, as much as I like this bow, I really push towards the Stealth Carbon, which is weighing, I think, 3.8 pounds, because for me, that's nice and light and better for hunting and better for walking around a field course. But that's just me. Now you've got the lower cable, cable guard position, lower stabilizer position here, um, multiple sight holes here, which is good. Now you, now you're going to say, well hang on, why is everyone producing heavy bows now? Because the Elite bows are heavy, the Matthews bows are heavy, and the, now the PSE bows are heavy. A lot of it I think, obviously the bigger riser creates strength and stiffness in the shot. But what target people find is the heavier bows are more stable. So therefore they're making the bows more heavier to make them more stable. But I prefer the weights on them, my stabilizers rather than the handle of the bow. But that's just me personally. But I'm interested to see what this what this shoots like. Now, bear in mind this bow is significantly cheaper than this Carbon Stealth. The Carbon Stealth is retailing about 1,900 Australian, where this is retailing around 1,300 Australian dollars. So significantly cheaper. Um, now the other bows this compete, competes with is obviously the Halon from Matthews, also 35 inches speed on this one and the Halon I'm going to guess are similar. The Elite options, um, Hoyt's going to have something, Prime's going to have something, but to me what really stands as the part is the modules and the draw length adjustability. So now I get, I get questions, what bow would you choose Stephen for 3D archery? 
if you had to choose one and the question was would you choose the Supra Focus or the Evoque 35 and I think that's a really good question I couldn't answer it because um, one of the viewers asked me this and I said I'd try both so what I'm going to do is I'm going to shoot both, both through the chronograph and we're going to see which one shoots quicker um, I'm going to suggest they're going to shoot similar speeds um, and then I'm going to say probably I'm going to choose the Focus that same price because the Focus is a little little less weight first off let's look at the balance of this bow the balance is good you'll notice the focus without a stabilizer on will lean backwards and that's because the focus is generally built for a target bow where you've got that big long stabilizer out the front so this is really designed for the hunting person who's got that short stabilizer so the bow's balanced straight off the straight off the cuff basically uh, the grip feels comfortable the limbs look short um, not short like a Matthews, but they do look shorter than a PSE. Um, I'm just looking at the focus. Because they kind of look shorter to me than the focus. But the focus is more upright. Um, okay, so let's compare the draw cycle. It's got big cams. So I'm expecting this to be pretty smooth. So let's see what it, let's see what it draws like. Now when you're drawing back a bow, always put an arrow in the bow. Because there's nothing worse than dry firing your bow. That the arrow that the bow triggers when you don't expect it to, that you shoot it by mistake, and you dry fire your bow. It's nothing worse. This is a 60 pound bow, set at 29 inches straight out of the box. So, the first, the first pull of this bow, it's heavy straight up. Before I even pull on it, you can feel it's heavy. Now the speed on this bow is 320, 323 um, and since it's heavy to start with it means I'm either really weak or this is going to shoot quicker I'm guessing so let's so it it feels like it feels heavy at the start and it feels like it's holding the same pressure all the way through the draw cycle now I feel like it's dropping there Dropping, 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 dropping. Oh, 90% let off. And when I'm back here, it's very, very comfortable. I'm going to try leading this bow down. God, that's uneasy. When you're back here, you don't want to let this thing down, so I'm going to shoot it. Because this bow has got 90% let off, when I'm back here, I'm actually holding six pounds. So when I want to let this thing down, you, you feel like you've got to push it forward and it's a bit, it's a bit un, unsettling. So the draw cycle on this bow, let's just discuss that a little bit. Now I've shot some of the elites recently and um, some other bows and they hold the pound to the last second they drop off into this big valley. This bow holds the poundage, so it's actually harder to start with and then it slowly drops into the valley and it's, it seems to have this big valley and then the stop. It's a very, very easy bow to, to draw, aim with because you've got 90% let off. Now if you're going to get more speed, if you want more speed, shoot the fast let offs. Um, so shoot the fast modules and you're going to pick up 10 feet per second because basically that valley will be shortened down. Now we're going to shoot through the chronograph. There was no noise, the bow was quiet, there was no vibration. It was a very nice bow to shoot. Now you don't expect there to be much vibration because the bow itself is quite heavy. Um, now the arrows I shoot are Gold tip velocities, um, 90 grain point, they weigh 327 grains. Um, 90 grain point with pins, they cut about 29, I think, um, inches, 29 and a half, I think I cut, cut the map. It's the same arrows using on my test. Now, a fast bow, so the fastest bow I've tested with these arrows is the full throttle, which tests at 330 something feet per second. The 330 bow, 330 IBO bows will shoot around 300 um, from memory. 
So I'd be expecting this to shoot around 300 feet per second. If it shoots 330, then that's faster than, than I was expect, expecting with this. Because the IBO speed on this is 328, so I'd put it at about 290 feet per second bow. Through the chronograph with my draw length and my poundage, so let's see what speed it shoots. God, such a big long belly in this bow. Two ninety. I'm going to do that again to make sure it is two ninety. This bow is just so so easy to draw. Now, do I prefer it more than the Evolve Thirty Five? The Evolve Thirty Five, I feel it was physically lighter than this bow. Um, I feel like the paintwork is better on this bow. I feel like the riser design is probably better on this bow. Two ninety one, so two ninety one, two ninety. I'm pretty comfortable with that speed. Now I want to shoot the focus, which is my target bow, which is set at twenty eight point five. It should be set on sixty pounds. Um, I want you to shoot with the same arrow, see what speed I get. Because when you're talking about three D bow, you're talking about speed and accuracy. So it's always a question to me whether I'd go for the evoke or the focus. Now, yes, I do have all my target stuff on this bow, but that's not going to increase or decrease the speed. It does have a peep sight on the string, which will decrease the speed by, I think it's five feet per second, but let's see what speed it shoots. Half an inch shorter in draw. Two eighty seven. So these bows are shooting about the same sort of speed, given the fact it's got a plunger, given the fact it's got a peep sight on it, half an inch shorter draw length. Um, now I'm going to say the draw cycle on the Evoke is much easier because it's got that big long valley. Their focus has got a short valley and only sixty percent let off. So depends on what bow you're looking for, really, for three D. I would tend to probably shoot the Focus for 3D um, over the Evoke because it's physically lighter if I was shooting a long stabilizer. Now if I was shooting a short stabilizer, I may be inclined to shoot the Evoke. Um, but saying that I'm, I'm almost tended again to shoot a, I'm, I'm almost inclined to shoot a Focus with more weight on it because it's 37 inches axle axle. Um, and the bow's physically lighter. So. Okay, so a couple of quick things on the Evoke. You have a two piece, you've got the ability to fit a two piece quiver now. PSC this year have, have given the option of putting a sling in that hole there. Now there was a review done on this bow where it came out with a sling. That's an optional extra which you can purchase and it just purely clips into that design there. So it's a bow sling, it just clips into there and there and it goes over your shoulder to carry the bow while you're hunting. Um, this bow feels really really nice to shoot, it's nice and quiet. Um, Let's go and shoot this at 18 meters and see what sort of groups I get. I, I, I expect I'll shoot this quite well at 18 because it is 35 inches axle axle. It's a very easy draw cycle. It's well balanced. And there's no vibration. So I'm expecting to shoot this bow well. So let's see how well I shoot it. So we're here at 18 meters to shoot the Evoke 35. Um, the bow set on 60 pounds at 29 inches. My draw length is about 28 and a half. That's what I do all my reviews on. I'm shooting Victory VAP arrows. These are 350, 350 spine. These are my target arrows. I've got bony air veins, 140 gram points with the pin system on them. I suspect I'm going to shoot this bow pretty well. Now, I've sighted the bow in. 
I've shot about six arrows with it and I have not hit a 10. The last three arrows were in the nine on the left hand side of the target so I have moved my sight to the left hopefully so that will go on the 10. So let's see how we go. Now my first thing when I aim this bow I find the draw cycle very easy so I find my pin basically stays on the center the whole time with some of the other bows I test because the drop off is so rapid my hand moves when I aim so as I'm drawing back aiming at the center of the target my hand will drop literally off the target and then I move my sight pin back onto the target so I'm a lot quicker aiming this bow than with the bow with the high let offs even though this bow's got 90% I'm talking about the rapid let off so I find this bow a lot quicker to be aiming with. Because the bow's got 90% let off, when I'm back here I'm completely stable, it's got a rock solid wall. The bow feels really easy to shoot. It's got about a one inch valley. So the valley, the bow drops off very, very softly. So for me, the bow is very easy to shoot. Now that doesn't mean I'm going to shoot this bow better than any other bow I've ever shot. It doesn't mean I'm going to shoot it better than a $400 Stinger bow. Because um, what I find is most bows shoot very similar. So for a, for a new archer looking at buying a bow based on a price point you've got to say well if I'm going to shoot about the same with the Evoke 35 that I will with a Drive or a Stinger, a Stinger being a $470 bow, a Drive being a $700 bow, why do I want to fork out an extra $600 for the, for the Evoke? First thing is, if you buy a Stinger or a Drive, which are the most two popular bows sold, they're always going to be beginner level bows. Okay, so they're always going to be a budget bow and they're always going to be, they're fine, nothing wrong with them, but they're always going to be, you could have brought better. So when you buy this bow, you're getting the better paint finish, you're getting the machine limb pockets instead of plastic limb pockets. You're getting the Evolve Cam System, which allows you to modify the bow to make it a fast bow, high let off bow, low let off bow. It's got the yoke pulley system to keep these cams aligned. You've got the quarter inch axle instead of the thinner axle. You've got the roller cable slide, which is a hundred, you know, 80 odd dollars in value. You've got the torque cable guard, which pulls it in to stop the torquing on the, on the cables, which stops the cam lean. You've got the stronger riser, you've got a full machine bridge riser as opposed to a cast riser. So this riser is going to be, what, four or five times stronger, I'm guessing? So what does this mean? Now, if you buy a Stinger or a Drive, in let's say in 10 years, look, that bow's still going to be okay. I see plenty of drives and stingers in my shop which are 10 years old. But it was it was a budget bow back then and it's still a budget bow and the new sting is better. If you buy, I've gotten a, it's called a, I was going to say an Evolve, an Evolution, a PSC Evolution, which was top of the line 10 years ago. Machine riser, the Evolve, the Evolution cam system, which was a hybrid cam system. 10 years old machine riser, a beautiful shooting bow. I still have it today, and up against the top of the line bows, it's still a very competitive bow. Now, yes, it's $600 more expensive than the Stinger, but my point is that bow will always be a good quality bow because it's got all the top line stuff. It's got the machine limb pockets, it's got the machine riser, it's got the good cams. 
and the bows don't change much from year to year. So when I look at buying a bow for myself, I go, well, what's the price point and can I justify it for myself? Now, this bow at $1,300 price point, to me, it's the top of the line. It's got all the top of the line stuff and it's cheaper than the competitors. Buy about two, at minimum $200, minimum $200 cheaper. Um, but, you know, again, something like the Prime, it's what, six, seven hundred dollars cheaper. So it's, it's a lot, lot, you know, against the Hoyt, the Hoyt's gonna be, what, 1800? And is the Hoyt as good as this? I'm gonna say no, because it doesn't have the adjustability that this has. Um, the bow's not as easy to adjust, it doesn't have, um, the cable system on this is very easy to adjust and replace compared to the Hoyt. The Hoyt's a lot more, requires a lot more tuning Then it gets back to the whole warranty and the replacements of the parts. Because PSE uses the same modules on all these bows, it's always easy to get parts. So if you want to get, let's say in two years time, you want to get the fast modules for this bow because you want to try 3D archery, they'll still be readily available. In fact, I had a person from, oh, I think they're from Queensland, ask for modules for a money maker bow. Now that bow, that bow was, 14, I'm going to guess 14 years old. PSE still had them. 14 years old. It's just phenomenal. So for me, this bow shoots really, really well. Now, comparing this bow to the Focus, which is what one of the viewers asked me, you know, which bow I'd shoot for 3D. Now, if you go to the archery shop and you compare the Focus to this bow, one-on-one -on -one without stabilizer, this bow just feels fantastic compared to it because it's really well balanced. Um, probably looks better too. It's a nice looking bow. Now these arrows look like they're grouping really, really well. Um, but I would definitely, like for 3D hunting, when I say hunting, I'm talking about where I don't have to, if I'm gonna walk all day, I'm, wearing, I'm, I'm taking a sling with this bow because of the weight. Um, and I'm buying the PSE sling which clips into this um, system here. But you can just see the bow doesn't move in my hand, there's no noise, it's it's just a very, very nice bow, it's sharp. Ten years time this paint's not going to be worn because it's, it's blended into the metal. Grip's comfortable. Yeah, I'd like the bow lighter, which is why I look at the Carbon Air, but the Carbon Air is $2,000. This is $1,900, or $1, this is $1,300, so it's an extra $600. Now, $600 a big deal to you? Depends how much money you earn. For me, $600 is a big deal to me. <laughs> that all gets down to how much money you earn per hour. Only an archery shop, you're lucky to make $10 an hour, so it's like 60 hours work. Oh, I think I'll take the Evoke. Uh, <laughs> If you're a lawyer and you're earning $1,000 an hour, just go for the carbon. In 
fact, I, I had one customer I saw, he's got the Carbon 35 and he's got the Evolve 35. And his principle for it was to shoot the Evolve 35 for target archery and to use the Carbon for hunting 3D. Anyway, his son came into my store with his Evolve 35s and his, his dad gave him the bow. I was like, your dad gave me this bow? That's a really good deal. That's really nice of your dad. And he said, dad prefers the carbon bow for target. Now I get that because you can just add the weight to the stabilizers. Um, but this is a really nice bow to shoot. How do I rate it compared to all the other bows I've ever shot? And I've, I've got to compare it to the 35 inch bows from Matthews. I've got to compare it to the, you know, the Hoyts, the, the Elites. I think the draw cycle on this is as good or better than the others because the draw cycle is so easy it doesn't hurt my shoulder at all. The functionality on this bow is better because you can just change the draw length with the rotating module and you can change the modules to change the whole the whole bow. Whoops. Hopefully they went in the middle. <laughs> I was aimed in the 9 for most of that shot. I think I moved it in the 10 the last bit. So the price point on this bow is better than the competitors by a minimum of 200 so I think this bow in the marketplace is priced and performs better than the competitors. Now I can't remember if this bow is available in 80 pounds or not. I know one of the Evoke bows is available in 80 pounds, which is a good thing for people wanting that high poundage bow. Now for me, if I wanted a hunting bow, I would probably go for the Evoke 31 um, because the bow's more compact and lighter. But if I was looking for a 3D bow, target bow, cross, I'd be going for the 35. Both the same price. Um, but I just, I like the more compact bow for hunting. I, I think I've shot enough arrows. Let's go and have a look where they are. Um, they, they, felt, they felt great and I haven't been shooting. I've been shooting recurve and I've been doing um, audits in my shop for the last two weeks and working every night so let's go and have a look how those arrows are okay so i'm up here at the target now the bulk of my arrows are good arrows i've obviously got one here in the eight and one there in the eight but the rest are grouped really well now is it better than what i shot with the drive which i shot really really well with look there's a stack there in the middle which are just absolutely unbelievably grouped you know, as well as any of my target bows with my full scope or full stabilizers, those arrows in the middle. This one up to the side, I don't know what that was. I because I just shoot shoot, shoot arrows. The one hot, there's a couple there high. One off to the side, but it's it's pretty good for a hunting. I mean, this is a basic five-pin hunting sight, whiskey biscuit RS, no peep sight, no stabilizers. That's a good group. Um, I'm not going to say it's better or worse than I've shot with any other bow. But it's definitely up there with the best groups I've shot. And that's what I expected beforehand because what, I, what I'm finding with the bows that are shooting really well is good balance, nice draw cycle, easy to draw, easy to shoot, easy to hold. If you've got those things happening, this is easier. Now with long versus short bows, a long bow is going to decrease, is going to increase, sorry, is going to give you a bigger angle here. Short bow is going to increase the angle here. And what that does, a longer bow is going to move the peep sight closer to your eye, a shorter bow is going to move the peep sight away from your eye. So I find for 3D archery, with the peep sight closer to your eye, it's actually a little bit easier. Um, when the 
angle on the string is more acute, the bow's twitchier, um, harder to get balance in the bow, so it's more twitchy with left and right. Um, this bow with the six and three quarter inch brace height, almost seven inch brace height, I found I was getting no left to right shaking. It's not the fastest of the bows in the 3D sort of scene, but you can fit their fast, fast let off modules, increase that speed by 10 feet per second and give you a still a seven feet, sorry, give you a seven inch brace height. So this bow is still going to be easy to shoot with a super fast speed. So my summary of the Evoke 35 uh, comes in a whole bunch of colors. I love what PSC have done with their finish here on the paintwork and it's improved from the first ones I've seen. Whole bunch of different colors, which is good. The finish is good. They've got really good features in this bow. It's improved with time with a thicker axle. Um, I love the concept of the two-piece quiver. I love the what they've done with the bow sling. Uh, that clips into the riser. The fittings with the multiple sight pins is good. Um, the flexible cable guard's good. The price point on this bow is very good in the marketplace, better than the competitors, which is what you'll find PSC will generally do. Um, so all up, I'm gonna say I'm very, very impressed. Now with PSC, the one thing I haven't mentioned is the deflection on the limbs. So PSC used different limbs, there, there, and there, and there, to stop the cams from leaning to the side. So let's just run through this. On the left hand top, you've got a 107. Right hand top, you've got a 112. Down the bottom, you've got a 112. And the bottom right hand side is a 114. So that's meant to keep the cams aligned. Um, it's a very simple system, you know, very, very simple. It's it's a good system which PSC works well with. The limbs are standard on all your PSCs. They're pretty bulletproof these days. So, really like the bow. I would prefer the bow to be lighter in physical weight, but most of the bows which are 35 inches today are this sort of weight. So, very nice. And if you wanted lighter, then have a look at the Carbon Stealth. Same sort of bow with the carbon riser, but this bow, definitely one of my favorites. Um, and I don't know if I'd buy this bow or the 31 for based on the work which I do, which is, you know, like field kind of archery. But I do do lots of targets, so I may be inclined to go for the 35. So if you do mainly 3D, go for 35. If you're mainly hunting, go 31. I'm Stephen Hamm from Archery Supplies. Enjoy your archery, and the more you shoot, the better you'll shoot. Thanks for watching. Bye.